Hi, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to look at Canon cameras uh, with a view to going back to film photography. As people know, I do enjoy black and white film photography. That's all I use, black and white film, in some of these cameras. Some cameras are better than others. Some are broken and won't work. This is the oldest camera I've got. This is from 1962. This is Canon RM. It takes an R mount lens, which is difficult to source nowadays. Um, this is broken, it won't work, it's, it's completely inactive. That's the oldest camera I've got, Canon camera I've got. The next is an FX from 1964. This uses FL mount lenses. You can put FD mount lenses on them, but you don't get the, the aperture connections that you would on an FD camera. Uh, this is a very clean camera. I've used this a few times. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to check the speed of the shutter, when you're buying a camera, you, you know, you need to know it's something like. I've got this in bull. Press the shutter, it should stay open. If it closes, you know there's a problem. Then I would increase the speed to half a second. That's about right. Increase the speed again to a fifteenth of a second. What you're listening for is a change. Every time you adjust the speed, the shutter, you should notice a change. This is one thousandth of a second. Yeah. So it all looks pretty good. This one I've actually used and it takes pretty decent pictures. I have done the light seals in this camera. When you're sourcing old cameras like this, the chances are you're going to have to replace the light seals. This is the Canon FX and this is the Canon FT. Both are FL lens mount cameras. Both have a hot shoe, but neither, none of them connect electronically to uh, the flash. It has a crank to rewind the film. Both of them have a crank to re rewind the film. It's what's called a collapsible crank, basically. This one has a light meter which is here. It's not through the lens. Whereas this one, the FT, is through the lens metering. And that was basically one of the big differences between the two cameras. The next two cameras are the Canon TX and the Canon TLB. Now, both of these are FD mount lenses, and basically they've still got the cloth curtain and the crank. They've still got the collapsible crank to rewind the film. And they're both through the lens. Again, you can adjust the speed, and you can see that there is a difference in the speed of the curtain opening and closing. So you know that it's pretty this it's quite clean inside this one. So I'm going to replace the light seals at some point and there we go. I'm going to open the back and this one there is a problem with the shutter because as you can see as I'm cranking it it's firing itself basically. It doesn't matter what I do with the dial, it's just five minutes off. So this one does actually need looking at. When I get round to it, I will have a look and see if I can fix it. The TLB is from 1976 and the TX is from 1975. So <coughs> you find that these cameras are quite heavy, they're solid, you know, they're, they're workhorses, you know, there's, there's a lot of weight to, to this camera, to all these cameras. They were made to last, and they do last. If they're looked after, if they're cleaned, 
you can get quite a lot of joy out of using an old camera like this. But it is fully manual, there's nothing electrical, there's no auto focus or anything like that. These grouper cameras are what is termed as the F series cameras. Even though it's a TLB and a TX, it's still an F series camera. Uh, the main F series camera which I haven't got was the F1. The F1 was the top of the range professional camera. It's, uh, it's, it's still quite expensive, 100 to 200 pounds for an F1, which I can't justify at the moment. If ever I'm rich, then obviously I'll probably buy one. But these are my F range cameras. Pretty good. Working, not working, and this is obviously a Canon RM. The next group of cameras is what was termed as the A series cameras. I've got three examples. I've got the AE1 program, the AL1, and the AT1. There was others like um, the AV1, the A1, the AE1. All the good cameras, the top of the range one was, um, if I remember rightly, it would have been the A1. Uh, the AT1 was uh, 1976 and again it's still a cloth camera. <clears throat> These cameras were a little bit more sophisticated than the F series. They were a little bit more electronic. You've now got through the lens metering but you've also got information in the viewfinder. The AL1 had an electronic focus assist so basically it would help you focus by bleeping when the camera thought your picture was in focus which was a big help and the start of auto focus but it didn't auto focus it just assisted you in focusing uh, the AT one is from 1976. These, although they're not quite old, they're still quite heavy. There's no, you know, it's metal, it's, they're all metal bodies. Again, the FD mount lenses. And they're good cameras. The only one I've used is the A1 program. Uh, it did a pretty good job. I did replace the light seals in this camera before I used it. You would probably have to use, replace the light seals in most of these older cameras. Uh, again, good cameras. Worth looking at if you want to go back into film. The next set of cameras are the T cameras. These are again FD mount lenses or use FD mount lenses. This was the first one and this was 1983 and this is the T50. It is a simplicated camera. It's mainly electrical. You have to rewind with the rewind crank. Uh, it takes normal AA batteries only two two batteries but the normal everyday double a batteries fd mount there's no dials other than the program or the lock or, or whatever it's fully automatic there's you can't do anything other than take a picture you can't adjust anything on this camera So it's, although it's a good camera, you know, there's very little scope for actually doing any, anything creative. The next camera that they did was the T70. This is a much more creative camera. You've got 
I've already done a video on this camera actually and I've used it, it's actually got a film in it. Uh, these cameras do actually rewind, not auto rewind, they do rewind. You have to press the button and the film will go back itself. Uh, again, like I say, FD mount lenses. This one has a little bit more sophistication. You can do a little bit more creativity. With the next one was the Canon T80, which is from 1985. This was the first camera I ever purchased. Not this particular one, obviously. The one I actually purchased got stolen. I purchased this with the lens. It's the first Canon auto focus camera. It uses AC lenses. There's only ever three AC lenses ever made. It was the only camera that they produced that could use these AC lenses. There's a 50mm f1.8. There's a 35 to 70mm f3.5 to 4.5, which is this lens here. And then there's a 75 to 200mm f4.5 lens. Also, one of these that actually works with the lens that actually works is, is quite difficult. The next set of cameras I want to talk about are the EF mount cameras. These were brought out from uh, 1987 and they produced them until film cameras, obviously, they, they still do the digital ones. They produced them until about 2004, 2005. Uh, this is the very first one. This is the EOS 650. The significance of the EF camera is the fact that it is auto focusing. All EF lenses, or most EF lenses, are auto focusing. You can put them in manual if you don't like the autofocus, but this makes these ideal to go back into film. They were widely produced, there's lots of them about, there's lots of different models, more models than the F range, or certainly the T range or the A range. So these are very significant in the fact that they're not as old, the light seals Are different they don't use the rubber light seal so they don't disintegrate so you do get quite a decent light seal that doesn't need replacing like like some of the older cameras you get more functionality and more automation so they are actually good cameras to start a film photography the next one yeah is the EOS 600 and this one was produced in 1989. Uh, I'll have to go to one of these cameras. It has a similar layout to the EOS RT which is also a good camera. This is one I use on a regular basis. It actually has a film in at the moment and this one was produced in 1989 the same time as the EOS 600. After, after that, we've got the EOS 700. Now the next video I do is going to be a hands-on of the EOS 700. So I'm not going to go into it too much now. But basically it is a good camera. But it's limited to what you can actually do. There's no aperture priority, there's no aperture, you can't change the aperture, you can't even change the ISO settings. So we'll go into this camera in a future video. Towards the end of the EF, they started producing plastic cameras, which were aimed at enthusiasts, they weren't aimed at um, professional photographers. This is one of the last ones made. There is a I think it's a 300x or a 3000x which came a bit later but this one is from 2003 it's a 3000V and basically it's plastic, it's got a plastic mount they were quite cheap cameras it's got a screen on the back which gives you all the functions 
and basically you have a manual, an AV, a TV program and then you've got the scenic views the other side of the off button. Um, these were produced in similar time to the EOS 20D. So digital, digital photography had started to take off so these were in very much decline. Same as the 30V, the 30V, uh, the 300V sorry, was produced in 2002. It's a similar design to the 3000, similar functionality. There's similar functionality, there isn't a lot of difference in the design. even down to the back. Obviously the screen's bigger on the 300 but uh, there's very little difference in any of it. This camera, which I've already done a video on, is EFM. Although it's an EF mount camera, it is totally manual. Uh, there's no autofocus, so you have to focus it yourself. And there's no screens or nothing. All you get is an aperture dial and a speed dial. You can put it in full manual, you can put it in shutter priority, it doesn't work in aperture priority, but you can put it in full auto. I do use this camera and there isn't a film in it at the moment, but it is quite clean as you can see. They are good cameras to use because you have to think about everything because you have to work the focus yourself you have to do the aperture there is a meter in it which tells you if you're correct or not but basically it's a good camera to start with <coughs> the two main cameras I use if you get them out is this one and this one <coughs> this is the 30. You can pick these up quite cheap. I use this, it's got a filler in as you can see and I use this one quite regular. It's got a date back which is out of date, you can't use a date back because it, it doesn't come this far forward. This was produced in 2000 so it's now 20 years old. I can't open the back because obviously there's a film in it. But it's a significant camera, you get a lot of functionality and it's, it's also one of the eye <coughs> calibrated ones which means basically you look through the viewfinder where your eye is looking it will choose that for focus point and it will focus on whatever you're looking at through the viewfinder and that is also the same with this one <coughs> and this is probably the one I use more often than anything. And this is the EOS 3. It's, it was aimed at professional photographers. And again, this one's got a full moon, so I can't uh, show you the insides. But it, it's a significant camera in the fact that it's got a lot of autofocus points, which you can choose, similar to a digital camera. Uh, there's a lot of functionality. You don't have the dial with uh, like you don't have a dial like the 30, but you do have what is a mode button, and then you scroll through the modes to choose whichever one you want. Uh, that fetches us to the end of this little camera review. If you if you're thinking of going into film photography. The best cameras to choose are the newer ones. The older you go, the more work that needs doing to the camera and the chances are you're going to get one that doesn't work and needs work doing to it. If you enjoyed the video please consider subscribing, uh, press the like button and if you press the bell as well you get notifications of the next video I do which is going to be all about the EOS. 700. 
So until next time, ciao.